to thank uh, Steve and Rob and, and uh, Maple for putting on such a great event. Uh, given that Canada is our largest trade partner, it's great to see uh, organizations like uh, this uh, thriving and uh, such great turnout. Uh, as the largest uh, uh, manager of a, the largest parcel and freight delivery network um, here later, uh, in Canada, we're certainly huge supporters and we plan to be very active members uh, going forward, so we're very happy to be here. I, I didn't get a chance to talk to everybody uh, this morning when I first came in, and this being my first uh, Maple event. I'm curious in the room how many of you are involved in manufacturing or selling products in Canada versus a service. So mostly service industries. Just curious around what, what services are represented here today. Both management tax. <coughs> I imagine legal data centers. Okay, data storage. Finance. Okay. Right. Interesting. Well, I'll try to touch on a few things, uh, some information that hopefully will be uh, of interest to both groups. Um, before I get started, and go through the agenda. Uh, why Canada matters? Obviously, we're all here because Canada is an important part of our businesses. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the demographics, some of the trends uh, that are going on in Canada right now from our perspective, some of the e-commerce trends, since that's a growing part of all of our businesses, becoming increasingly important. Uh, talk about Canada Post, who we are in Canada, purely or international, what we do, which is the organization that I work for, which is the U.S. subsidiary here in Canada, in uh, the U.S. And then I was doing some research on, on something else and I came across a, a list of little known facts about Canada, which I'll share with you. Uh, a couple that I've mentioned that I thought were kind of funny. So if you get nothing more out of this presentation, at least you'll have a cocktail um, uh, starting conversation uh, topic. So why Canada matters? Uh, for me personally, this is the main reason. <laughs> uh, this is a trip that my brother and I take every year to the uh, west coast of BC off uh, Vancouver Island. Those are two. My brother unfortunately caught the larger one, which is actually a Tai, which is a 30 pound salmon. Mine was about 20 and a half, which uh, he sends me every once in a while to remind me. Uh, but if you ever get a chance in, on your business trips to Canada, I highly recommend you go out and, and do this. It, it, it's amazing. So on a, a more serious note, why does Canada matter? For us, uh, this is 2013, but U.S. exports uh, more to Canada than to China, Japan, U.K., and Germany combined. So huge market, right? Huge partner for us. Canada is the United States' largest trading partner. 34 states consider Canada their largest export market. A huge number. You can see here at the bottom, I shouldn't use the laser pointer here, but you can see here kind of this graph, um, mostly here in, this, in the central U.S. and northeast. For most of those states, it's the number one export market. Uh, exports, goods in terms of value and volume make up about 20% of all exports from the U.S. From 1989, uh, I, I was looking up some other stats. I think from 1989, since NAFTA, two-way trade has tripled. Uh, you can see here from 2003 to 2013, uh, goods of exports um, up 77% from 2003 to 2013. It's pretty impressive numbers. Uh, I pulled a couple other numbers here I just thought were interesting. Over 8 million U.S. jobs, one in 23, uh, depend on trade and investment with Canada. And Canadian-owned companies operate in 17,000 plus locations in the U.S. and uh, employ about 600, 610,000 U.S. citizens. Uh, Canada offers a tremendous business opportunity. Historically, again, number one trading partner. Uh, we share bilateral trading relationships in the world with uh, or Canada and the U.S. share the largest bilateral trading relationship in the world and one of the most highly integrated economies 
more than 1.8 billion uh, in goods and services cross the border every day. Uh, U.S. and Canada governments are committed to minimizing tariffs and consolidating regulatory mandates, which is an ongoing process. Cultural similarities, Bill mentioned it, uh, shared uh, language, similar values, propensity for the same types of consumer goods. So if you're selling in uh, Canada, very uh, high level of familiarity with U.S. brands. Um, other than Quebec, which is primarily French speaking, um, more than 85, 88% of Canadians speak English. Potential Canadian market, 35 million consumers, 80% of which live within 100 miles of the U.S. border. So again, a lot of movement between the two countries, very familiar with U.S. brands. Um, when the exchange rate was better, uh, a lot of Canadians coming down to the U.S. to, to shop. As you can see here, uh, you know, the three major cities, uh, Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal, you combine that to 10 million uh, Canadians live in those three cities, which is just under one third of the total population in just those, those three cities. Uh, comparable demographics, high earners, median household income, close to 70,000 in, um, in Canada uh, versus 50%, 50,000 in the U.S. Very affluent, defined as having disposable income, 64% versus 50% Americans. Uh, employment, high rate, actually these numbers, I just looked up the most recent ones, is a little bit old. Uh, in Canada right now, 7%, just moved up from 6.8%. The U.S. is actually down to 5.5%. Uh, and that was from May 2015, although for a lot of people it probably doesn't feel like that. Um, very affluent, 64%, uh, or, uh, I'm sorry, educated, post-secondary education, um, 25 to 64 ages, 51% Canadians versus 42% Americans, so a very educated population. We talked a little bit about e-commerce trends I wanted to touch on with you. Canadians are online. Canadians spend more time online than anyone else in the world. 45.6 hours per month. They're cooped up in the cold. Probably have a lot less of that in the <laughs> Southern California, right? I don't think I even spend 45.6 hours per maybe a year. I'm not even sure. But 88% of Canadians uh, have high-speed access. So a uh, very built-out infrastructure there to, if you're interested in selling products online, um, they have the ability to, to do that. Uh, Canadians shop online, so high online engagement. Uh, the average Canadian visits 100 websites a month uh, versus 97 for Americans. They love to buy online using smartphones. Um, Canadian smartphone owners purchase more products on mobile devices than American, 67% versus 64%. And the average Canadian spends online annually over uh, $1,100 per Year. They love shopping online. 60% of Canadians have purchased from U.S. company or website. We see huge growth in this area uh, right now. We're getting a lot of calls on this. Uh, in 2012, these numbers are a little bit old, but still significant. 22.3 billion uh, on retail e-commerce in 2012. 51% of Canadian users made online purchases, and Canadians spend an estimated 8 to 10% of their uh, consumer dollars in the U.S. Business to business uh, e-commerce. Interestingly, much larger segment. We see this a lot. A lot of businesses that have had uh, distribution channels in Canada, now uh, expanding their e-commerce reach in Canada. Uh, to, especially with the exchange rate now, trying to get uh, the price points down, getting a little bit better uh, direct uh, connection with their customers. You can see in 2014, percent, percentage of work purchases made online growing very fast. Less than 50% uh, in 2014, expected to be right around 60% in 2017. Percent, uh, 2017. Uh, B2B buyers use the web to uh, research products. 74% are going online to research products that they're purchasing for their business. Nearly 50% of buyers use tablets or smartphones to research uh, work purchases. 
That includes things like laptop, desktop, uh, smartphone, tablet. You can see the usage rates there. I thought it was interesting. Um, uh, those numbers. Can't really see this, but a combination of factors drive repeat business. Canadians are very shop uh, uh, price conscious. They use a lot of search, uh, a lot of engines to comparison shop. So that's an, uh, something to keep in mind if you're planning on doing business in Canada uh, through some type of e-commerce platform. Uh, B2B sales stronger than B2C in Canada, two, two and a, uh, point one times the size of the B2C market. Uh, I would, you know, most of us think of these uh, e-commerce as being B2C. Uh, in Canada, large uh, B2B component to that. Canadians also are very uh, comfortable with having to pay additional charges. So, you sell a product, you're going to have to pay, depending on the way you deliver it, the type of clearance you, you, you use in doing it. They're used to paying provincial sales tax, uh, harmonized sales taxes, all types of different things that for us, purchasing uh, products here within the U.S., we're not used to doing. Although we do offer a lot of products or a lot of services that can help uh, manage that and actually deliver it to the customer with all of those those uh, taxes included. So from the customer's perspective, it's a, a much better experience. Uh, Canada Post group of companies, who we are. Again, we're... Uh, we're under the umbrella of Canada Post, which is similar to the USPS, which I bite my lip a little bit saying that because here in the US we have a very uh, negative uh, opinion of the postal system, but in Canada it's a very different uh, network. Much more run like a business, profitable, uh, very innovative in the services they deliver. Uh, it's done a lot of work in terms of making their delivery work, uh, network efficient, a lot less to the home deliveries. You use much more uh, mail uh, boxes, community boxes, so that the delivery of the of the packages is much more uh, efficient. You also can go online and have your packages delivered to uh, a retail outlet if you prefer. So you live in a place where you're not comfortable uh, having your packages delivered at your front door. You can go on and it's called flex delivery. You can choose a Staples location or a gas station. There's all kinds of of different retail outlets that you can have packages delivered. These are the group of companies that are under the Can Canadian Canada Post group of companies. SCI, SCI Logistics is our logistics arm, 25 depot locations uh, across the um, across Canada, which will be warehousing and cross stock distribution. Pure Later Inc. at the top of the Pure Later um, uh, section there on the right, that is our our career network, that's a $1.7 billion company. That's similar to what we would think of as FedEx. So that's doing B2B parcel deliveries. Um, Pure Later Freight, which is our freight division, which would do palletized type quantities. If you're shipping to a major retailer, um, if you're shipping to a distributor, that would be the network that we would use um, through Pure Later Freight. And then Pure Later International is the group that I work with. We're a U.S. subsidiary. We are working with U.S. companies that are uh, interested in moving product into Canada and then leveraging all those different uh, types of services in uh, companies under our umbrella to make the final delivery. As you can see, our Canadian network is really unmatched. Uh, it's 50 years of business in Canada. Uh, a lot of investment has been um, uh, put into building out this network. You can see from all the little dots, uh, we're covering just about uh, every point in Canada. Peer Leader International, uh, which is the Courier Network, 12,000 uh, uh, employees uh, work at Peer Leader International, 6,000 plus trucks, 98% uh, on time within our network. Uh, Canada Post, again, 6,600 retail outlets. We're operating more than 6,000 uh, 6, trucks in that network. Um, 30,000 street letter boxes. So again, not a lot of at home deliveries, a lot of them are going to these uh, letter community boxes. And again, SEI Logistics, which is 25 location center, uh, logistics centers across uh, Canada, 40 critical parts depots, and we're managing about 2 million square feet of uh, warehouse space in Canada. This one I love. I love this slide. Uh, it really shows in terms of assets on the ground in Canada. To the far left, you have UPS. You see a lot of gray there. Uh, very small uh, asset uh, base uh, for deliveries up in Canada. 
a little bit more with FedEx on the right, a little bit even more with uh, DHL on the left. And if you look at the Canada Post companies on the right, uh, not a lot of gray there. We're covering every inch of Canada. I think 98% of Canada we deliver uh, with company-owned assets. Uh, so much more control, much less chance of damage if you're moving products, much better tracking visibility. Um, unless you're going to ice road trucker territory, um, you know, we're going to deliver it on a pure liter truck. Volume, 1.4 million a day in packages move through our system, 27, over 27 a month. And on an annual basis, we're moving over 300 million packages um, through our network. Pure Leader, a very recognized brand in, um, in uh, Canada. I was speaking to a gentleman that was from Canada and immediately recognized Pure Leader as a name, similar to what we would think of as FedEx. So if you're selling product in Canada and you have on your website that you are going to deliver your product with uh, Pure Leader, it's a huge advantage for Canadians. Canadians have an uh, identi identity identification with Pure Leader. They also have a lot of options in terms of, again, how they can have that package delivered. Um, so it gives, them a, it gives your company a high degree of respect and visibility within Canada um, with that recognition and adding a, a, a very strong brand um, to complement your own brand. Pure Leader International, what we do, what we do here in the US. So we're based in Jericho, New York, 250 employees. We operate 30 branch, 30 branch offices. We've averaged, and this should be updated out to 2014, we've averaged 20% year-over-year growth every year of our existence. Extremely profitable and in business 20 years. This is a map of our locations. As you can see, we're in most or just about every major market across the U.S. Uh, I can't remember if people want it or not. So uh, out of the U.S., Pure Later International uh, really offers a four-part four solution. Uh, the first one is the pickup in the line hall. So we work with businesses, we pick up from your door, we consolidate that with uh, freight that we have from other companies, we move that in a consolidated manner up to the border, and then we go to number two, which is the clearance. In most cases, working with companies, we uh, set it up so that um, all of your goods and services would be pre-cleared once they hit the border. So for example, from Orange County, it's about a two-day transit up to the border. Uh, once that, those goods hit that border, it goes right through. There's no delay. It's already been pre-cleared electronically. And uh, uh, from there, we go into the in-delivery. So depending on the type of service that you need, whether it's going B2B through a courier network, it's going to go B2C through our, our postal system, whether it's going to go on a freight, uh, palletized type freight movement through our freight network, we then go in through Canada, clear it, and we give it to one or two, three of those different um, services. If you, some of our customers use all three. We have customers that are, part of their freight's going through the Canada Post system, part of it's going through Pure Later Inc., which is the Pure Network, and part of it's going freight. We move all that at the same time. Unlike a FedEx where they, they're very segmented where they'll come and pick up this, you know, your courier, and they have another person come up, pick up your freight. Um, we're doing it all at the same time, moving it all together. One customer's clearance for the whole deal, and then we're making the in delivery at the most um, efficient manner uh, for that particular type of move. And then returns management's the last part. And this is a very overlooked part for companies doing business in Canada. You have a product that's delivered, Maybe it can't be delivered, it's undeliverable, something's moved. You know, for whatever reason, we can't uh, get a delivery made. People want to return goods. What do you do with it? We operate a number of returns facilities. Um, we are able to take that product however you want it done. And we return it to one of our return facilities at which time we process it. And then we can either do a number of things. We can uh, re-ship it to somewhere else. We can hold it in inventory and allow you to create another order against it and ship it to somebody different. Uh, we can donate it, we can destroy it, or at the end of the day, if you need it, we can consolidate it 
and move it back over the border, clearing it, which is a whole other process because now you're going to the U.S. Um, and we can move that uh, freight either on a consolidated basis or just as an individual piece uh, to wherever you need to go in the U.S. for your own processing. This is a graphical representation of uh, kind of what I just outlined. You can see on the left, you have the, the uh, door pickup, and we're going to move it uh, via a truck or via the air, depending on what the service level is. In the middle part there, where it says CBSA, border crossing point, uh, we're, we're crossing at three points, uh, which goes into Richmond, Etobicoke, and Montreal. So at that point, we'll cross and we'll induct it into one of our service centers. And then, as you can see on the far right, we'll deliver it on whichever mode is the best uh, for that particular type of mode. Uh, Pierre Lair International is highly recognized. Uh, I could list many awards. Uh, again, we've been in business 50 years. Recently, uh, top 100 great supply chain partners for two consecutive years, 2013-2014. Certainly expect to uh, see that again in 2015. Recently, with our rollout of Pure Post product, which is for e commerce, we were uh, uh, presented an award for uh, innovative uh, specialty retail developing a robust e commerce solution in 2014. Well, that's it for me. Um, I do have a couple, like I said, if we have some time, that I, did, I did pull a few facts that I thought were. Kind of entertaining, and again, if you uh, need cocktail material, I thought this was kind of interesting. I didn't put it up here because I had a problem with PowerPoint earlier, uh, but I'll read them to you. So 20% of the world's water is in Canada. I did not know that. 31% of Canada is taken up by forest. 55 or 15,500 of the world's 25,000 polar bears reside in Canada. <laughs> The world's longest beaver dam is found in northern Alberta. How long do you think it is? Yes. Two miles. 28, 2,800 feet. 80% uh, of all alcohol consumed in Canada is beer. In the, if you're in the beer business, it might be a good market for you. 77% of the world's maple syrup is made in Quebec. Not surprising. <laughs> Basketball was invented by a Canadian, although in Canada, but although in the U.S. Uh, one fifth of Canadians were born outside of Canada. I thought that was interesting. Uh, and things you can't do in Canada: 35 to 50 percent of all music broadcasts on the radio must be Canadian. And of course, she's a And it's illegal to have comics depicting criminal acts in Canada, which seems to eliminate a lot of comic books, right? Anyway, that's it for me. Questions? Do we have time for questions? Yeah, of course. Um, I was just wondering so, the shipping and delivery industry has seen a capacity of growth and innovation. I'm sorry. The shipping and delivery industry has seen a precedent of growth and innovation in the last five years with companies like Ship coming out and in terms of e-commerce, Amazon Prime and Google Express are taking over. So how is it affecting what you guys do? Is it eating into your profits? Are you changing your processes to match what's happening up there? You know, and really all those things are a benefit. Uh, we're seeing a tremendous amount. You know, we have an unrivaled network. So a lot of the people you're talking to are actually coming to us. To, to help facilitate that in Canada because of our network. To build out a network that we have in Canada would be impossible. Uh, it would take many years and multi-billion dollars worth of investment. And there's a lot of brand loyalty to appear there. So what we're seeing on both the B2C, B2B side is a, uh, an interest in leveraging e-commerce platforms um, to accept orders, engage uh, customers, and uh, so we have a product called Pure Post, which uh, is specifically targeted to companies that are in e-commerce, providing them door-to-door uh, -door tracking uh, through the postal system. Uh, so all those trends are good trends for us. 
that's probably the fastest segment of business uh, right now. So, um, again, our network really, I don't want to say protects us, but allows us to take advantage of those transit fees. I noticed in uh, some parts of the United States, Amazon's experimenting with their own delivery services, I groceries or drones, <laughs> which is kind of terrifying, actually. <laughs> What's your take on that, on those things? We don't do a lot in the, 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 the grocery business. We don't handle a lot of food-type product. Most of what we're moving is uh, B2B-type industrial um, uh, parts and equipment. Um, we do a lot with uh, textiles. So I'll give you an example, Charlotte and Bruce. I don't know if you're familiar with them. Probably some of your kids are buying Charlotte Bruce uh, type clothing. Hot Topic is another one of ours. Um, Cabela's. So a lot of um, that type of e-commerce for us. So we don't do a ton in the grocery space. But we do actually do work uh, with Amazon and have some relationships with them. So again, having the delivery network that we have there, you know, is a huge advantage for us. So anybody can help grow that part of the business and use that type of delivery network, we're, we're going to support it. 